Well, howdy, boys and girls. Once again, we welcome you to the Fruit of the Spirit series, Devos. And then tonight is the last night of our last ingredient of the Fruit of the Spirit. Now, self-control, here's a little different meaning than what I shared with you on Wednesday night, okay? This one says, choosing to do what you should do, not what you want to do. Let me say it one more time, okay? Choosing to do what you should do, not what you want to do. Now, I think every boy and girl watching tonight, you want to do the right thing all the time. But, don't always do that. Mama says, go to bed. It's getting late. I don't want to go to bed. I want to stay up and watch Power Rangers. Right then you are arguing with your mom. You know you should go because that's what she's saying, but you want to do what you want to do, right? Okay, so speaking of television, there was a series on whenever I was a kid growing up that I really, really liked. And I still like watching the, the reruns, I guess you could say, whenever I get a chance to see one of them. And uh, see if you can figure out which one of the characters in this story is choosing to lose control because of their choices. Gosh, you must have been saving up for it since you was a kid. My dad bought it for me. Come on, Taylor. Hop on the rack and I'll give you a ride. I can't. I gotta get this garage cleaned up. What happens if you don't? I don't get my quarter this week. Kids aren't supposed to work for their allowance. My pa is awful busy. Maybe he hasn't heard this new stuff. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, I'll ask him. Take it from me. Talking is a waste of time. You have to take action. Kicking a table leg, uh, rolling around on the floor, kicking your feet, pretending you can't stop crying. Gosh, I don't know. Oh, for crying out loud, Taylor. <laughs> hey, Arnold. Take it easy, Arnold. I didn't mean to say nothing wrong. Get the idea? <laughs> a bike on the sidewalk. Oh. <laughs> oh, watch it. Doggone it, I warned him, and he deliberately rode on the sidewalk again. Is that true, son? Did you hear Officer Fife warn you? Yes, sir. Young man, I'm going to have to take this bike and hold it. You can't take my bike. It's my bike. Now, you no listen here, young fella. When an officer gives you a warning, you're supposed to mind. Yeah, now get on off of there. Now go on home. You'll see. I'm going to tell my dad. Hi, Paul. Oh, hi, son. Paul, can I talk to you about something I don't understand? Sure, come on in. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. <laughs> I just don't understand it, Paul. What? None of the other guys work for their allowance. I just don't want to work for my allowance. No work, no allowance. That's not fair! Don't raise your voice to me. Now, you get on out of here. I got things to do. <laughs> what are you doing? I was holding my breath. Good lung exercise. <laughs> Don't get your clothes all dirty. <laughs> Sheriff? Yes, sir. You the boy's father? That's right. Simon Winkler. Andy Taylor. Now then, what's this all about? 249A, section Roman numeral 5. All right, so he rode his bike on the sidewalk. Arnold was given a warning and continued to ride his bicycle on the sidewalk. The offense was clearly defined under normal weather conditions. Everybody's against me. Oh, there, there, son. Get him out, little fun. 
Was it such a crime? Now, if we don't teach children to live in society today, what's going to happen to them when they grow up? For heaven's sake, Sheriff, the boy's not a criminal. The minimum punishment for this offense is impounding the bicycle for one year. <laughs> well, you can't do it. I demand you return that bike and now. Now, you look here. You're that boy's father. You're responsible for his actions. Now, he's too young to be locked up. But if you're not going to take responsibility, maybe I ought to lock you up. You ever think of that? Go on, put him in jail. He won't dare. I don't want to lose my brand new bike. I just got it. You'd rather I put your father in jail? I want my bike! <laughs> Sheriff, there won't be any need to impound that bike. How's that? I'm going to sell it. Sell it? You're going to sell my bike? That's right, Arnold. But it's my bike. You can't sell my bike. Be quiet, Arnold. <laughs> Mr. Winkler, there's a real nice woodshed out back. Good old-fashioned woodshed? Real nice one. No, I want my bike. I want my bike. <laughs> I want my bike. <laughs> Is Arnie going to get spanked, Paul? Don't you think he deserves it? I don't want to say. After all, he is one of my own kind. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Hi, son. I was wondering if by any chance you might need a person to clean the garage and do odd jobs around. There happens to be a recent vacancy in that department. Oh, boy. 25 cents a week, OK? Sounds fine to me, Paul. Good. Oh. Yeah, Paul? I uh, suppose we make that uh, 27 cents a week. That's a dollar more a year. Yeah. What you gonna do with all your money? Save up for a bell. A bell? Uh-huh. Then save up for a bike to put under it. <laughs> Now, it was pretty easy to figure out which one of those characters was the real stinker, right? Arnie had made it a habit for a long time of doing what he had to do to get his way. And it worked for a while. Opie, the, the one with the ball cap that had the temper tantrum in the middle of the floor, you know, the play-like one, his heart was such that he didn't really want to go against his dad, but he saw all the cool stuff Arnie had, and he thought, well, maybe it'll work for me. But long, way, long term, that's not really what he wanted. Arnie's dad even lost control. He lost control of Arnie. He decided that uh, I'm going to let my son have his way, even though he mm, is not easy to live with at times. See, boys and girls, every one of us, your mom, your dad, everybody, we all want to do what we want to do sometimes. And sometimes it goes against what God wants for our life. And we learn it in small ways, you know, like mama saying, get up and go to bed. You know, the right choice at that moment goes a long ways in our heart, causing us to be the kind of person God wants us to be. There's a scripture in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 17. It says this, Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Let me read it again. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. That scripture is a whole lot like what our definition is that we shared today. You know, knowing what we should do, but not doing it. You know, the great missionary Paul, the greatest missionary of all time in the scripture, he said this about that very thing. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate, Romans 7:15. The disciple Simon Peter was a, is another example here. Uh, he struggled with this also, losing control. Jesus told him on the night that Jesus would be arrested and then crucified the next day, he told Peter there in the room, he says, you're gonna lie that you even know me. Three times tonight before the rooster crows in the morning, you are gonna tell lies. You're gonna tell people you don't even know me. And Peter said, no way, I'll never do that, Jesus. Well, they go to the garden. And Jesus takes Peter and a couple others a little further, and then he tells him, he says, he tells Peter, really, he said, Peter, wait here and pray so that you don't mess up. And Jesus went a little further and prayed for a while, came back, Peter's asleep, he woke him up, Peter, can't you stay awake and pray so that you don't mess up? And Jesus went back to pray, came back, Peter's asleep, went back to pray, came back, Peter's asleep. Three times he was asleep. 
Three times he would tell lies. You know what Jesus was doing? He was warning Peter. He was like saying, Peter, don't you get it? You need to pray. You need to make the right choice, right decision. Fear is going to creep into your heart, and you're going to look away from the power of God. You're going to look away from all the things that I've taught you, and you're going to choose wrongly because you're not preparing yourself. Most of us are like Opie, you know, in the story, the video story. Most of us are like Opie. We don't want to do the wrong thing. Sometimes we do, but we don't want to. And when we choose to do wrong, sometimes we have to go back and apologize. We should. And we should always pray to God, say, God, help me and give me strength to do the right thing. Arnie, he was in a different place. He was in a dangerous place. It's a place where none of us should get because Arnie was always thinking about how he could get his own way. He would do what he had to do to get what he wanted, and he didn't care who it hurt or who it messed with. Arnie wanted what Arnie wanted, and he was going to do it. And that's a very dangerous place to be in, boys and girls. Today, you're going to have lots of opportunities to show self-control. But more than that, you're going to have some great opportunities to do some great stuff today by simply choosing to do the right thing for your, yourself, for your family, for your friends, for your neighbors. And the biggest one is for God himself. How will you honor God today with your life and making good decisions and having self-control? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for these boys and girls that are listening. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in our life and gives us these wonderful fruit ingredients to make us the kind of person you want us to be. I pray for strength in every boy and girl. I pray for moms and dads to be full of the Holy Spirit. I pray for homes, Lord God, just to be saturated with your love. It's there for them, Father. I pray for choices to be made that glorify you and bring honor to you, to these kids, to their families, to their friends, their neighbors, to their community. Thank you, God, for all your blessings now. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, kids. Love you. And as I always say, missing you like crazy. Hope to see you really, 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 really soon, okay? Take care. Bye.